Welcome back, everyone. I'm Corey Titus. This is Mark Belinsky from our government relations team. And we're here to talk about, Mark, your recent article. Unfortunately, we're still talking about continuing resolutions, which are uh, really awful for uh, service members, their families, and uh, in the entire community. So the thought here is that we've all, at one point or another, while we're in uniform, been in a mass formation with a leader standing up front saying, now listen up. No one's going home until and fill in your task. Uh, whether it's maintenance and property accountability have to be 100% complete, everybody work as a team, or the more traumatic ones usually involve a lost set of night vision goggles at some place like the National Training Center involving hands across the desert looking for something lost to get 100% accountability. So been through all of those myself, so. But the, but the idea, though, is that we all, uh, we expect that as service members, and so the thought kind of naturally le lends itself to, oh, okay, Congress, if you haven't been able to get uh, your mission done on appropriations, then because there wasn't enough time, right. then, then maybe you need to stay at work, just like we expect of our service members. How many appropriations bills has Congress actually passed since 2010? Seven. Okay. And they're supposed to be 12 a year. Okay. Uh, but even more concerning is that since 2010, there has been 45 continuing resolutions according to GAO. And that, that just has awful effects on the entire enterprise, not only Department of Defense, but, but all of the, the, the planning that goes into budgeting, construction, and all of the stuff we really uh, have been focusing on lately with, uh, that affects family right, yeah, programs. Break it down a little more. You talked about this in a previous video, but what's the impact on the mission, the people, when we don't actually get appropriations? Uh, so. When we're in a continuing resolution, we have to operate off of last year's budget. Right. And the other problem there is there's no new starts and no new stops. So that means that all of this planned construction to fix problems with moldy barracks or housing that's falling apart or other big construction projects or, or modernization projects, they can't start. So right now we're in a continuing resolution. Some senior officials at the Department of Defense recently said, hey, look, this, just, this is going to cost us $35 billion. That's astounding. So, yeah, that's an incredible figure. And in the article, you called for something that might be viewed as extreme. You called for canceling Christmas recess. Are you the Grinch? You know, I might be considered the Grinch, uh, but... In all seriousness, no one wants to cancel Christmas. No one wants to cancel a major holiday. We want uh, our lawmakers focused on, uh, on passing appropriations. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we've, we've got a clear pattern. And it's not, it's not a political problem. It's really an administrative problem. It doesn't matter uh, what political party or who's in charge of Congress. We just, they just don't have enough working days where they're in session to pass the appropriations on time. And so the thought is, wow, if we look at the calendar and look at all the days they're in session, in order to get appropriations passed on time uh, in September, perhaps we need to take a hard look at summer recess and have them work through summer recess or lead by example and follow the military standard of, okay, no one's going home right. until exactly. uh, we get this done. Right. We have to change something administratively to get the appropriations done on time. Right, exactly. So let's bring it back home. What can we as Mo and what can our members do to actually help make some change here? So I think that the best thing we can do, because grassroots advocacy really works, is to engage with our elected officials and ask for their leadership on this. And, it, and it's interesting because there's no... It, it, it's not political. It's administrative. It's, it's the unfun administrative requirement to, to make things run and get a whole large group of people to do something they don't want to do, which really kind of is, is the strength of 
military leadership, we're accustomed to that phenomenon of getting large groups to go do something they don't want to do. Well, co Congress could probably take a couple notes from, uh, from military leaders on how to use the right techniques gently for not only with organizational leadership, but putting guardrails and deadlines and occasionally some consequences right. with time to motivate folks to get to that deal. Mark, thanks so much for stopping by and sharing your, your article with us. And I would be a bad lobbyist if I didn't always have one more thing. And my one more thing to all of you is to ask you to get on the Legislative Action Center at moaa.org, but also like activate your network and get your friends, family, and your veterans networks to get on the Legislative Action Center because grassroots advocacy really does work. And you know what, uh, your lawmakers aren't going to know what you need them to do unless you ask them. Mm -hmm. And of course, be sure to subscribe to this video series as well and like it and comment if you want to see something in the future. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.